Hello everyone, coming clean here. Thank you for tuning in to this video. In this video I'm going to show off some gameplay of a toy box I made called Pirate Island and after that I'm going to give you a brief overview on how all the logic is set up. So in this toy box you are stranded on an island and you're going to have to fight yourself all the way to the top and eventually escape on a pirate ship. As you may already see, the camera is locked onto a path and it follows the player along the path. Very similar to the shared screen co-op level tutorial I did a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, I'm playing as Mulan. I guess one of the pirates character would have made more sense, but Mulan is a 3.0 character and they have, as I mentioned before, a much more diverse moveset, so they are a little bit they're definitely more fun to play and I think they're more enjoyable to watch as well. So I'm, I'm sticking with her rather than the pirate's character. And I know I'm fighting bears now and the toy box is called Pirate Island. But uh, don't worry, we'll get to the pirates. I just think these elemental bears fit so well into any sort of natural theme. You may also notice now that the player is boxed in between these two uh, tree walls. And the camera switches position to a higher up position to give a little bit more overview. And it might be obvious that you have to defeat all the enemies before the wall will be removed again. I've actually come to appreciate these locked camera positions maybe even more than the actual camera of the game. Because they give you such a better overview and the camera doesn't get locked in different strange positions and you get cheap shotted by enemies from in the back. All right, now the bridge is destroyed and we are gonna have to platform our, our, our way over to the other side. And now we come around the corner to the first pirate camp. The camera gives you a bit of an overview of the camp and it stops to highlight some weapon pickups. And then we move in to engage the pirates. The movie you see right here, that's Mulan's launcher. It works a little bit differently from, say, the Star Wars characters, since it doesn't, doesn't launch yourself into the air, it just launches the, the enemy, and you can follow up with a series of other attacks. And what you can see right here is off camera, but I smack the pirate off the cliff, and he dies when he hits the water. It might be obvious that I'm using a trigger area for that effect and the kill switch, but I'll show you after the gameplay is done. You can see that I do not pick up any of the weapons. As it turns out, the weapons right here, which is a pirate bomb and a flintlock pistol, they work quite poorly if you can't aim them. And you can't do that when the camera is locked to the path like this. You can't, if you, play like, if you press the left trigger, nothing happens, basically. So I might have to switch up those weapons later. But Milan is a lot, of, a lot of fun to play, even without weapon pickups. These types of toy boxes is the one that I primarily go for when I make toy boxes nowadays. This sort of linear adventure, where it's quite obvious what the player should do. The fact that the text creator doesn't work makes it a little bit harder to create a sort of hub world with lots of mission givers and uh, story and the like. But these types of linear adventures works obviously just as, as, as well as before and you kind of had to get creative to make an adventure to you know set everything up so that it's obvious what the player should do even if, if like this toy box there's never any text displayed at all and now we are on the top of the pirate ship and we slide along here and we get a little bit of a camera shift. And in case you lost your orientation, here is the fire ship. And right down here is the place where we started off. And now I'm going to pick up this weapon, which is a blunderbuss. It is essentially a shotgun. And here's a conveniently placed horse. I made two of them in case you want to play two players on this level. And now you can just jump off the horse if you want to. But this creates sort of a mini game where you have to ride around 
and uh, shoot the enemies with your blunderbuss. Just you know to break up the monotony of the gameplay. And now we can ride around the corner and get up to the top level of the island along this pole right here. And now we are at the very top. And we get another camera perspective right here. And the last pirate cab is right down here. And now we can make a daring jump right down here. And now you'll see what I talked about before, that I like the locked camera position, because now I have, it, I have no idea what's going on behind me. I can of course switch the camera perspective, but I find that there's always something hidden behind you for some reason, if you're fighting many enemies. And now the last enemy wave is defeated. That's where over there, where we started. Here is the pirate ship. I'll just pick up the last few sparks and then we're gonna steal the ship and we'll be on our way away from this island. Here we go, and now we get an overview of the whole thing. All right, so here is the same map, a save I did before the toy box you just saw with where I left all the logic. Here's the camera that showed the overview of the whole island. You might wonder why it's attached to a path, because the camera stayed still, but if you have a locator as a target for a target camera, it can sometimes be, get a bit buggy, but the path will always, always solve that. Here are the trigger areas that is connected to a kill switch, so if the player or the enemies jump down, they will be defeated. Here's the camera and its path that uh, Essentially was the camera view for almost the whole the whole toy box. This trigger area activated it. And this trigger area spawned the first enemy wave. This trigger area is connected to a logic gate and the logic gate in turn is connected to these two enemy wave generators. That is connected to locators, of course. And you actually need the logic gate. And you need it because the, the, the logic gate has to send an output to deactivate the trigger area. If you don't do that, you may accidentally enter the trigger area again and you will spawn the waves, the enemy waves again, and that it's probably not what you're going for in most cases. We fast forward a bit because this first area is basically more of the same, and then we get to this area where the players were boxed in. And I always obviously use the replayer. I have recorded me creating these wooden walls, and when you enter the trigger to the left here, the walls, the, the replay is playback and the walls are created. And also, uh, these three effect generators are connected to these locators and they play the dirt debris effect at the same time as the re replay is playing back its recording. And here we have an AND gate. An AND gate is essentially a logic gate that needs multiple inputs to send its output. And now we have to defeat two enemy waves for the logic gate to send its output because I wanted it to be a continuous stream of enemies, not just wave after wave after wave. And when the last wave is defeated, the, the replayer play, playback, the, the recording is cleared and the wall is removed. Here we have another path and it's just to attach this piece of the bridge. You cannot place it this close to the terrain, but if you attach it to a path, you can. And you can see the path going up here to follow the players along the platforming section. This is the camera that gave you an overview of the camp. The camera's target is this locator that travels along another path. And now we fast forward to the ship. You can see the scalable barrier blocks to stop the player from falling down and dying. This trigger area will activate this camera to give the action view where you slide along the rail. And this trigger area will deactivate the camera. Here are the horses and uh, Obviously, this wooden wall was created by another replayer. So when the enemy waves are defeated, the replayer will clear its recording. And here we have the top of the island, the camera, that is locked to this locator you can see slightly further down. When you jump down here, the camera is deactivated and here is the last enemy waves. 
I created these scalable barrier blocks right here because I was afraid that this little cliff area was too narrow and that the enemies would accidentally jump down and die and it would be a very boring fight. That's why I created the scalable barrier blocks. I wanted to create more of them over the whole map, but they take up a lot of memory actually. This is the path where the ship travels along when you jump into the trigger area on top of it. It makes some slight twists and turns to make it look like a ship actually sailing on water. And here is an overview of the whole thing again. I hope you enjoyed this video and the gameplay. I would like to thank you very much for watching. My name is Coming Clean and I will see you next time. Take care.